Kit. I'm a confident business owner and I love to trade snacks with kids. I am JP. I am kind and I like to help others. Hi, I'm Kelsey. I love adventures and I'm always ready for a challenge. Hi, I'm Craig. I love kids and like to help them. And I'm Dash. I'm curious and playful. I'm Zoe. And I'm Junk Lord. We got Queen Amber's permission to explore the Lost Realm and we are going to go on an adventure. Ready, guys? I'm so excited. I'm all in. Whee! Let's get started before it's too dark. Guys, aren't you bored? It's pretty much just swamps, trees, and moss. Hey, did you notice Dash? He's not talking to anything at all. Dash? Dash? Oh, no. Dash is out of power. Maybe we need to charge him by giving some of our energy. I agree. Let me be the first. Someone's really excited. Let's keep moving before it's too late. A weapon factory? I think this will interest you, Zoe. Yes, certainly. Swords, spears, and tridents. This will help me protect my cardboard city. I'm sure you got enough weapons now to keep away Carter Brown. Colorful Candyland. And there's Abba Zabba. My grandma talks about that. I'm going to learn how the candies are made in the factory and buy some from the market to trade with the kids. Wow, the kids are going to love it. We have three more energy points left. I'm so tired, I'm going to sit on that rock. Hey, where did the rock come from? It's so scary here. I couldn't do anything. Land mine, step back. This is like the queen warned us. Look, there's a no. Let's go check it. To disable, be able to throw the magical potion into the cauldron behind the wall. Remember, you just have one minute until the mines start exploding. We activated the booby trap, so we must disable it. We all agree, but how are we going to throw the potion over the wall without stepping on the lines? Why don't we build a device to remotely throw the potion? We need a lot of materials for that. Yes, Zoe, Kit, Jacqueline, put together the materials we all got. I got rubber bands, sticks, and tape from the reusable junkyard. I've got straight and flexible building sticks and connected with the weapon factory. I traded the candies from Candyland for some Lego blocks. Okay, let's start building the device so Dad can use it to throw the potion. Kit and JP, why don't you both start building the attachment while Zoe and I will go find the right spot to throw the potion from. And Junk Lord and I will go inform the Queen about this. Sounds, Sounds good. good. We started our attachment design in a fun way. First, we tried throwing the ball using the launcher kit to see how long it could throw. We thought a long hand could throw the ball far enough, so we started brainstorming different ideas, but that something, something like yeah. that we can put yeah. a ball inside for it to launch. We're planning to uh, make our principal as like a slingshot. We constructed a model with a base and a swingable long hand using a building set from our toys collection. We twisted a rubber band around the hand so that we get elasticity. Our theory worked, but the model was very heavy and couldn't throw the ball far enough. Then we used popsicle sticks for the hand and added rubber bands to increase the elasticity. It helped throw the ball far. Let's go hold it. Okay, ready, steady, go. 
Once we had a successful attachment design, we worked to put it on Dash. This has to fit firmly and Dash's head should control the trigger. So we used Lego connectors and Lego blocks to build a flat platform around Dash and duct tape the attachment on it. Uh-oh. Ow! <laughs> She's a we also attached a flexible building stick to Dash's head that reaches out and holds the attachment trigger. This way, when Dash turns its head, it activates the trigger and shoots the ball. It helped throw the ball far, but as we tried multiple times, the popsicle st stick started to bend and break. Also, we noted that the rubber bands kept losing the elasticity. Later, we realized that the smaller the hand, the firmer it would be and launch the ball with more power. This time, we replaced the long hand with a small plastic flap from the building set. But the trigger hand couldn't hold the flap because the flap is short and bendable. We glued a popsicle stick to the flap so that the trigger hand can hold it. Also, to hold the ball, we glued a water bottle cap to the flap. We tried and tried and tried multiple times, and finally, with a lot of adjustments of elasticity, we could throw the ball far enough. That was around 140 centimeters to cover four grids in between. Success! It worked! Yay! Great job on the attachment, Kitten JP. The queen is on her way. Let me show you all the right spot we identified. Dash, maybe you need to go back a little to throw the potion correctly. Is this okay? A little more. Is this fine now? Yay, yeah, we did. I throw it carefully. Warning, warning, Queen Chicken Duck. Come on, Dash. We are running out of time. I'm aiming, guys. You have successfully disabled the trap. The rest of the kingdom is now yours. Thank you, Creek Kids, for your great job discovering new land for the kingdom. I, Queen Ember, hereby announce your names to be included in the kingdom's legendary diary. We started our final mission journey by writing down our to-do list to score maximum points. With that, our plan was to do landmarks first. Our first landmark is a reusable junkyard. In olden days, people try to reuse things as much as possible. We thought this would interest Junk Lord. In the story, Junk Lord contributed sticks and rubber bands to build the attachment. Our next landmark is the Weapons Factory. We created this for Zoe as she wants to help protect her cardboard city from Carter Brown. In the story, she helps contribute by bringing sticks and connectors for the attachment. Our third landmark is an ancient candy land. We thought this would interest Kit as she likes to trade snacks. In the story, Kit traded the candies for Lego blocks and used it to build the attachment. Once we built the landmarks, we planned the route to travel, so we have three energy points left. Our first route is to travel diagonally everywhere to save energy. Oh, straight, so it loses one power. Okay. Right, wait, wait. One. So we used a strategy where Dash goes diagonally, but it was too complicated to calculate the measurements. So we decided to go in a narrow pattern with only two diagonal stretch. We calculated the measurements and wrote the program together. We used functions to reduce duplicate code, and we used counter variables to count each button press. We used another variable to count how many 15 centimeters stretch Dash traveled so we can reduce one energy point for every 30 centimeters. We chose 15 centimeters because one diagonal line is 45 centimeters and one straight line is 30 centimeters so we derived the greatest common factor. Our program to throw the ball is really simple. All we have to do is look straight and trigger the attachment. We also calculated the time for every custom sound we used and reduced it from the total one minute timer. Our baby trap idea is to build a long brick wall surrounded by dangerous landmines that appears mysteriously when JP sits on a rock. We drew brick patterns, trees and plants, along with the landmines to decorate the wall. 
For designing the map to match the Lost Realm theme, we created a few backgrounds to be used in a story video. We drew trees, rivers, and wild animals to fill in the background. Something and then stick it on the border and then draw like, like, yeah, like a background. We also used the trading tree and wood logs. Though we completed most of our tasks meeting in person, we had to move to online sessions at the end to follow our stay-at-home orders. It was challenging in some places, but we efficiently managed to complete all the tasks. Thank you, WLRC and Cartoon Network, for the great opportunity this year. Go team! Get out of the